Let me tell you about my family. This is all true. My mom is from Italy, old world Italian. She's got arms like this from stirring sauce. <laughs> she called it gravy. She never left the kitchen. If there would ever be a portrait of my mama, it would look like this. <laughs> People always say, come on, Steve, you don't look Italian. Well, I'm only half Italian, the, the bottom half. We'll talk later. <laughs> my dad's from Russia, old world Jewish, came here when he was 14, was drafted when he was 18. That's where it met my mom at the end of the Second World War in a restaurant in Italy. My mother was the bouncer. <laughs> my father always said, from the very first day, Stevie, I met your mama, she chased after me. Because he probably didn't leave a tip. <laughs> You're so damn cheap, cheap, cheap. I'm not cheap. I'm thrifty. I was born with nothing. I still have most of it. The war was over. Hello. Ma, it's me. It's over, Ma. It's over. We won, Ma. We won. Oi, what was the score? <laughs> the war. We won the war, Ma. But I got better news. I'm coming home, and I met somebody. I'm delighted, sweetheart. Tell me. You're going to be upset, Ma. I know it. She's not Jewish, Ma. Uh, as long as you're happy, darling, what could I care? She's Italian. What could be better than Italian? Great. We want to come home. We want to live near you. No, no, darling. You won't live near me. You live with me. You'll stay in the house. You'll sleep in my bed. Where will you sleep, Ma? It won't matter, sweetheart. When I hang up, I'm going to kill myself. <laughs> but the weirdest thing is when my Jewish grandmother would come over to my Italian mother and try to convince my mother to keep kosher. <laughs> my mother couldn't make any sense out of the Jewish dietary law. She knows something about having to keep meat and milk apart. You couldn't eat pork and shellfish like shrimp, lobster, clams, but she did the best she could, and I would listen in. My mother would start. So let me get this straight. You can eat meat and milk together. It's no kosher. I told you before, it's not kosher. So like veal parmesan, that's no good. The meatball parmesan, the cheeseburger. You're starting to understand. OK. What about the chicken parmesan? No, chicken parmesan is not kosher either. OK, what about fish parmesan? <laughs> no, that's OK, that's kosher. OK, so shrimp parmesan is kosher. <laughs> no, according to Jewish law, shrimp's not a fish. <laughs> Let's go back to chicken. Chicken and cheese, that's no good, that's no kosher. I told you, it's not kosher. OK, what about eggs and cheese? No, that's OK, that's kosher. So let me get this straight. If I got an egg in this hand, and a piece of cheese in this hand, that's a kosher until the egg hatches, and then it's a no kosher. <laughs> Stubborn as the day was long, she never truly appreciated the concept of stockings. She would pull them up and then roll them back down to a ball by her knees. <laughs> Always got confused. I took her to get a checkup one time. The doctor takes out the stethoscope. Uh, Angelina, exhale. I'm sorry, what? Exhale, Angelina. One more time, Dr. Watt. Two big breaths. She says, oh, yeah, they used to be, but no more. <laughs> oh, she wore a brassiere the size of a hammock. I think it was a 38 long. I'm not sure. But I found out why she kept things in there. We go shopping, that'd be $12.52. I got 12 on this side. Here's a 12. I got exact change over here, 51. If I had the sniffles, she'd reach in and take out a Kleenex from the box. <laughs> Always got confused. We used to go to a place in Brooklyn called Bernie's Diner all the time. I'll have a tuna fish a sandwich and a glass of prune juice. He says, to go? She said, I hope so, yeah. <laughs> Mama, do all animals have testicles? Of course they're not, sweetheart. They're just the octopus. Grandma, what's a fallopian tube? This is a part of a television set. <laughs> Says it takes 400 million sperm to fertilize one egg. Why? They don't stop and ask directions. 
Grandma, what are genitals? These are people who are not Jewish. <laughs> I didn't want to be a professional. I didn't want to be a teacher, a doctor, an engineer. I didn't want to work for the government. I wanted to be an entertainer. That went well. You're going to be what? I want to be an entertainer, Mama. Oh, okay. So you're going to go from somebody to nobody. Is that what you're going to do for me? You're going to be a nothing, as you drool, a gagoots, a stunada, a futa manyara, a kadrita, a kadrita, a kadrita, a kadrita. My sister, the smoker, was in the audience. My sister's a smoker. She's a power smoker. She's a legend in the smoking business. She smokes four packs a day. She's been smoking since she's three. To date, she said, fired a two mattresses, lost three husbands, been diagnosed with acute asthma, and her cat has feline emphysema. <laughs> she tried the patch. I think it's working. She's up to 20 patches a day now. Forget the cost, $5 a pack, $20 a day, $600 a month, $7,200 a year, $215,000 in the 30 years she's participated in this sport. She has smoked away the cost of a condo and two cars. I looked at her, I said, why do you do it? She looks at me, wipes the tear from her larger eye. I do it, I do it because I enjoy it. What do you enjoy? The coughing, the wheezing, the phlegm, that brown smile? I'll have, I'll have you know, no. The doctor said that my remaining lung is still clear. Hello. Pop, I got great news. Hello. I got great news about the therapy. Is anybody there? Hello. Hello. Who is I it? I have it. I'm finding out. Who is it? How could you be talking to somebody you don't know who you're talking to? Stop talking, I'll find out. Maybe it's a Stevie, put in your ears. My ears are in, put in your ears. They're in the bedroom. Then go get them. Hello? Hello. 